Hey friends, it's Gina. Welcome to the Rebookery channel. I am going to try to piece together my December journal, holiday journal from last year, from 2017. After I made it, um, I felt like I didn't like it and so I took it apart because I didn't like the binding because it was so thick and I wanted to try something different. But then I just never finished it. So it was sitting in a box and I, it just, just driving me nuts because I don't like to have things unfinished. So here I am a year later, I'm going to see if I can piece this back together and rebind it. So let's take a look at this. Let me clean my desk off. So if you remember last year, I made this out of an old dictionary and then it was just a bunch of Christmas cards and random Christmas things that I had sitting around um, and I think it's all still in order here oh okay and then there were some okay so now I'm remembering so this is like Thanksgiving I started at Thanksgiving last year and so there was some stuff in here I didn't finish yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I remember doing this. So I did a process video on some of this stuff. Okay, so let's see if we can put this back together. And then let's finish what, let's finish what we started. Because I have some stuff in here that I never, that I never finished. Oh my Lord. Okay, all right, okay. So here's my plan. My plan is that I have holes and I like the holes, but the because this was so chunky, the binder rings just made it too hard to work. Binder rings work really well if your journal is skinnier, but the, because this is so darn thick, it just wasn't it just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So think I was gonna put string through here but that's not that's gonna rub and I want something that doesn't that doesn't rub so this ribbon right here and it's that sheen ribbon this is some old hallmark sheen ribbon this actually is gonna work really well because it'll fit through here and it's not going to have the friction that like fabric or string would have and it'll lay really flat. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do this. And then I'm also thinking that I'm gonna do two, be cool if I could do two or three colors at a time. I don't know, we'll see how this works. This may Okay, so I was able to get three of those ribbons taped together. I just taped like the end of it was just some washi tape. And I felt like that helped it to um, thread through those holes. So once I, had, once I got it going, it actually went really quickly. And so I just sped it up so you could see um, how I just did every page. And once I did that, then I went back through on the bottom hole and did the same thing with the three ribbons. I know those three ribbons don't really match anything in my uh, journal, and I'm okay with that because, um, I don't know, you, you know I, my, my color combinations are just kind of crazy and out there, but... I don't know, something about this pink, orange, and blue just kind of made sense, especially with the red cover of that book. So that's why I chose those ribbons. And so I'm just tying the top section together so that it it's easier to hold um, when I go to put the bottom ribbon through. And I'll actually go back and I retie it again because there's actually a, a trick to 
doing this type of um, a binding where you where you tie string or you tie ribbon through it you want your string to be wide you don't want to constrict it especially um, back there at the spine because then what you're going to do is get a really skinny spine and a really fat splayed out um, edge of the book like it looks like an alligator's mouth so what you need to do is kind of once you've got your book all put together and you'll see me do this here in just a second but once you got your book all kind of put together, you want it to be as wide as um, at both edges as as it as it wants to be, and then once you've got it that width, then tie your string. And you're not going to tie it really really tight. You want it to have some allowance. You want it to have some some room so that your book will not look like that alligator mouth, if that makes any sense. Now. I'm going through and um, putting this bottom in and you saw that I had a uh, card put in upside down. So I just snipped off because I didn't want to rebind the whole top again. So I just snipped off part of the card, flipped it over, and then I just um, secured the two holes with some washi tape. So once I got it flipped back over the right way, um, it just has a little strip of washi tape. So here's where I go through and I kind of play around with the string a little bit and you can see I want it to be thick on both sides and so that's why I'm I'm kind of playing around with the string and trying to get it as even as possible um, and I find that I have to let that uh, bottom string out just a little bit because I want it to be um, even with the top string and then and then it's perfect I, I love it and I know this is not everybody's type of book, but it works for me um, just because I had so much stuff in this journal. And the rings, because this book was way too too fat for rings, the ribbon just happens to work best. And actually, I kind of like the crazy colors that I have because as I'm flipping through this, I kind of see that I really do have some little pops of pink and some pops of blue and some pops of orange. And there's that card that I fixed. Um, so yeah, so, so this is cool. So once I get the binding, I, um, flip through and I see that what I had done last year before I put this away was I took the photos that I had printed off and just stuck them on whatever pages I thought they would go on to. And so that actually is going to work towards my advantage, um, this year, because what I can do is I can just literally go back in and glue them down. Um, because they're, they're already there. The photos are already trimmed up. The pages, um, I've already set aside what pages they're going to go on. And I kind of just want to be done with this. I kind of want to get the whole thing done. So, so I can, you know, look at it number one, and then kind of be like, okay, that's a finished project. Now I can focus on memory keeping for this Christmas. So I am going to use the most bare uh, minimum supplies here. I've got um, a crayon because I am being so lazy and my room is really a mess. And so I just, whatever is laying right next to my desk, that's what I'm using. So I have a blue crayon. I have um, some orange washi tape of all things and um, my photos and I think I pulled out a blue pin here and then this is some tissue paper from the the leftover from the journal um, last year because I had just taken all the paper and stickers and stuff and stuck it in a bag so uh, it's kind of sitting on the desk behind me so I'm using that and and a glue stick and just kind of slapping these things down I'm to the point now where I don't need to write anything down necessarily because I kind of, my, my pictures are kind of telling the story. These are just simple things like the dinner that we had Christmas Eve with our kiddos and um, having, opening their um, presents in their stockings and um, lots of pictures of our animals and, you know, just, just simple, simple Christmas things. And I don't need a lot of words to go along with what happened because our our Christmases our holidays are are actually really 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 simple and I like that 
Um, and then just kind of throwing down some washi tape, tape here every once in a while. Across the top of the left-hand side, I put those stamps. Those are some old uh, Christmas seals. Now this page on the left here that says a Christmas puppy, I keep going back to that because I feel like I want to put a picture of my dog on that page, but I don't want to cover it up because it is the most priceless picture ever and the text is just beautiful and I just don't want to cover it up. So I keep going back to it and I keep looking at maybe putting a photo on top of it, but I, in the end, I decide not to. I think I just paper clip um, something. But our dog we got for Christmas um, nine years ago. So he's not a puppy, but he he's our he's our Christmas doggy. So that page that I found in a book, I knew I wanted to include in this journal just because um, that that's when we got him. We got him for Christmas. And then as I'm going through and and doing this, I pull open the drawer next to me and that's where I've just got a bunch of scraps and just kind of finding things that I feel like will help um, complete this journal and tell the story and they they just are going to kind of find their way on some blank pages whatever pages I have blank in the journal like that packaging right there of the bear I just thought was kind of cute and there was a blank card and so I stuck it on there here's a couple of pictures of my dog and there's some green foiled wrapping paper uh, perfect size so I just put that down and then put the pictures on top of it and it looks like it was you know well thought out and everything and really it was just very haphazard so I'm just kind of flipping through and finding little blank spots and sticking um, papers and photos and stuff in those blank spots. And then I uh, want to put some stickers on. And I have amassed a pretty big collection of Christmas stickers. Um, I love going to thrift stores and stuff um, and looking through their old stationery supplies. And I can always find... Um, old stickers and, and things like that. So I have some old Christmas stickers and I felt like that might dress up this page a little bit. And those stickers, here's the funny thing. Those stickers are not necessarily my favorite. They're, they actually, you know, I don't know. I wasn't really in love with them, but that's one of the things I love to do is take something that I'm not necessarily in love with, something that maybe I kind of feel like is a little off-putting and then trying to make it look better, trying to dress it up. So actually putting those weird little Santa Claus stickers on that page with our um, food from Christmas Eve actually kind of made them look, look kind of cool. So I always like doing that. Now this piece of paper was pretty awesome. Um, somebody has some really nice stationery, and I say somebody because it was not me. I actually found this Christmas list last year um, in a shopping cart at a grocery store, and it's kind of a high-end grocery store. Um, so I was tickled when I found the the um, shopping list because. Um, all the stuff on there was just kind of like, oh, wow, that, this is <laughs> this is some pretty fancy stuff. Um, but the paper was beautiful. And so I just hung on to this paper. And I just, I don't know, I just thought it would be kind of cute to stick it in this, this journal. Um, just because it was just some weird random thing that somebody probably didn't think twice about. But yet, when I found it, um, I grabbed it and I've held on to it for a whole year waiting to put it into this journal. So flipping through, trying to find more empty spots. Um, I've got some pictures just of Christmas Eve, of just some selfies that my husband and I were just playing around with and trying to figure out where those will fit. I've got a Christmas card from a little um, neighbor girl who is in love with my dog and want to use that. But I don't really like the picture on the front because that's not the kind of dog I have. But then I find that this picture that my husband and I took will fit perfectly. So I just glued that over top and that seems to work out really well. And then I can take some of these pictures of my dog that we just took over Christmas break last year and stick those in because the card is actually about him. Um, it's this cute little girl. It's actually her 
grandparents live across the street from us, but she comes and visits. And um, she is the self-proclaimed um, founding member of the Grover Fan Club. And that's, and that's what they call it, the Grover Fan Club. Um, and she loves Grover, and she brings him treats, heats, celery, and carrots, and she brings him celery and carrots all the time. She um, took his picture last year, and she had it framed and gave it to us for Christmas, and she's got pictures of him um, on her walls in her bedroom, and it is just, it is hilarious. She is the Grover fan club, so the sweet little card that she had written us um, wishing us a Merry Christmas. I definitely wanted to make sure I included that. So I'm down to the end now. This was the trip that we made um, back to my hometown to see my mom and my brother and my niece. And so I just wanted to use these pictures. Don't need a lot of words because it's pretty self-explanatory and just using up um, the remnants of some paper and some scraps to get those pictures stuck down. I also took pictures of my boys at my mom's house for Christmas last year because both of those both of my boys fell asleep on the couch. So took pictures of them and I just want to include those pictures and I'm going to just kind of clump them together on these these aren't the best pictures in the world and so I just kind of want to clump them together and it's okay if they overlap and and I'm uh, I'm all right with that. I just need to get them down on a piece of paper. I could go back and journal about all of this stuff later if I wanted to. I don't think it's necessary. I think the pictures kind of tell the story. So once I get them on and trim it up, I'll just stick it in that envelope and I'm going to call it good. And so I did take a picture of this really cool gift that my mom gave me. It was a, um, a sewing bag or is like a bag of needlework from my grandma. And I actually have it in my room. I've hung it up on the wall, but my mom gave it to me last year for Christmas and I took a picture of it. And so I put that picture on the front of that envelope because, um, I don't know, it's just a really cool, it's just a really cool bag. And it was just kind of a highlight of, of that trip down to see my mom was coming away with something that had um, belonged to my grandma. And so on this last page here, I just have a couple more photos of a little day trip we took um, to downtown, downtown Kansas City over Christmas break and um, just some of the photos and stuff that my husband took. We always like to take selfies. Um, we're kind of nerdy like that and so just wanted to get some of those photos down and of course we always like to take pictures of food and so there was a really cool um it's a restaurant that has cajun cuisine and it's down at the the river in downtown kansas city and anyway they have um crepes and they have beignets and oh my goodness they're the best things in the world. And so we took a trip down there and walked around the river and then went and had some crepes and some beignets and some grits and some Cajun food. And ugh, it was so good. So I got to have a picture of that. So just sticking it on a piece of paper that I thought I was going to fold up and put in an envelope. But that did not work because I wasn't thinking about having to fold it up. And so... I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm just going to take that orange uh, washi tape and I'm going to tape it onto, I think that red page is an envelope. So I'm just going to tape it onto that envelope and make a flap and that'll work perfect. Um, pulled out a scrap of wrapping paper and I really like this wrapping paper. I just love the colors, but it has a picture of an orange on it. And I kind of liked that because the food picture I'm going to put down is um, a citrus beignet and so I wanted to put that down next to the orange and then I'm just going to slap a Christmas sticker on top of it and call it good. And so the very last thing I have to do in this journal is go back to this section right here. So this was actually back at Thanksgiving because that's when I started doing this journal 
and it was my husband's birthday, and we went to Topeka, and we went to, of all places, the Evil Knievel Museum. I know I, I did a journal process video on this. I'll, um, I'll try to link it below, but anyway, there was a lot of photos from that day, and a lot of times when I have f a lot of photos, I get overwhelmed, and then I, I can't like put them in the book or put them on the page because I'm just like, oh, there's so many and what if I mess it up? And here's the thing, you're not going to mess them up. And second of all, if you let it sit for a while, it'll, it'll come to you. And so that's what I did. I let it sit for a whole year. And then I looked at those pictures and I was like, oh, tch, this is easy. I just need to relate this to cars and motorcycles and automobiles and I had a little golden book page that was from the little golden book uh, cars. And it's one of my favorite little golden books. And I knew I wanted to use that page because the Evil Knievel Museum was all about wheels and, and automobiles and things like that. And so once, once I, I let it sit for a while, <laughs> it was just so easy to slap those pictures down. And there is nothing, nothing wrong with just slapping pictures down. Um, not everything has to have a well-written story. Sometimes you can tell your story with the photos, um, with color, with other ephemera. This time I'm using a little golden book page. And I happen to have a postcard from a paper shop here in Kansas City called Hammer Press. And it has a motorcycle on it. And I just happened to find it and thought, okay, it is absolutely perfect. I've held on to it for a long time, never really knew how to use it. But it's going to be perfect to slide into that envelope and stick a couple of the pictures from that museum on. And I don't, I don't need to write a bunch of words. Um, I could if I wanted to, but I really don't need to. I've got the ticket. I've got the pictures. I've got ephemera. I've got um, the colors that remind me of that day, the texture, and I'm good. I, I, think, I think it works. And so this actually is my completed 2017 uh, Christmas journal. Now, as I was doing this, I noticed that I had some pages that were still empty. And so here's what I'm thinking. Because this year I didn't do a lot for Christmas, um, I'm not going to have very many pictures. I'm probably just going to have a few, probably Christmas Eve and maybe when we go down to my mom's house. So what I think I may do is just make sure I label those photos um, on the card or whatever I put them on really clearly with 2018. And I think I'm going to stick them into this journal because I don't need to make a whole other journal just to document another Christmas. I can actually put it put it all, they can all play together. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And uh, when I do that, I will, uh, I'll film it and show you guys what it looks like. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for listening to me ramble for all this time. I hope you guys are healthy. Go, hope you guys are happy. And I hope you have a very happy holidays. Bye.